be back for some questions near the end. Hi, thank you everyone for joining. Um, my name is Simone Branch and I represent the DeGroote School of Business for the MBA program. So I'm happy to give you a little bit of info here before we go into questions and answers. Um, again, my name is Simone. My title is Recruitment and Admissions Manager. I'm here at DeGroote. Um, and here's just some important facts. So for McMaster and DeGroote, um, we're among the top 1% of universities in the world, uh, top three two-year MBA program in Canada, and the top 10 business school in Canada as well. So we have a 60-year history of MBAs, and we're the first in Canada to have the MBA with co-op and a health services specialization with over 200 employer partners um, and over 8,500 MBA alumni across over 80 countries. So lots of reach there. Our location for the DeGroote School of Business is in Burlington, Ontario. Uh, McMaster University's main campus, as you may know, is in Hamilton. So we're separate from that. We have our own beautiful new building um, and it's a little bit of a different area. Uh, you'll see some facts here and some images of the building. Um, so Burlington, again, is separate from main campus. There's only MBA students in the entire building, which is great. So all of your classes are in one place. Your, there's a cafe. All of your events are in one place, a cheaper parking. Um, so it's all around a better kind of like advantage for you in that way. It is closer to Toronto than Hamilton. So if you are doing co-op, um, in or near Toronto, um, because of the finance, tech, and health sector, you'll have that advantage. And there's also a lower cost of living in Burlington than if you lived in the greater Hamilton area. So today I'll talk about the full-time MBA and the MBA with co-op programs, as those are our most common programs for students to apply to. Um, but we do have two other programs that have more particular admission requirements, and you can ask me about those later if you have like over eight years of work experience, for example, um, or if you have an undergraduate degree in business, um, you may qualify for one of those other programs. But again, we'll focus on full-time and co-op. So the full-time program is a 20-month program. So that's four academic semesters or terms. We're looking for drivers, which are people with four years of work experience or more, um, up to eight. Um, and then you can work, study, or explore during that summer term between the two years. Um, some people do choose to continue their courses in the summer. That way they can graduate a little bit earlier in 16 months, um, but the normal trajectory is 20 months. Um, the MBA with co-op has a year of co-op integrated into it within three terms. So there are three four month terms um, and that's for new professionals. So you can have one to three years of work experience. However, we do admit students with zero work experience um, coming straight from undergrad or um, you know, one of the programs here at Seneca as well. Uh, so again, completed three four month paid work terms. And then you can specialize in one of six areas for either program. Um, those specializations are finance, business analytics, health service management, uh, strategic business valuation, strategic marketing, and the sixth is just a general um, MBA. So you can kind of choose a little bit of courses from any of those specializations. So again, for the full time, looking for five to eight, we sometimes do admit four, but really five to eight is the sweet spot. Um, here's some kind of like insight as to what you might be looking for when you're looking for a full time um, MBA as far as like a career change, um, next step up to management, um, and you're here to polish your skills uh, in a diverse academic um, kind of like background with other students in the program. And the full time, most of our uh, applicants come from business or economics, but we do have a very high interest from science grads, engineering, arts and humanities, and the 5% would be anything outside of that. And 
just to give you a little bit of insight. So the full time MBA, here's a, a quote from one of our students. Um, our student staff and alumni were the essential aspect, which make me choose DeGroote over other academic institutions from the beginning. When I was deciding where to pursue my MBA program, I found a special bond with the DeGroote community. Um, so that's from Nicholas. Um, just graduated, came from science, and then you kind of goes into his roles he had prior to the MBA program. So you can see a little bit of work experience there. So for the co-op, again, 28 months because of those uh, 12 months in the co-op, zero to four years of work experience. You're exploring um, and still building your base and you're trying to discover, you know, what's available to you. So the profile here is mostly science, a lot of, a lot of science grads, some business and economics, engineering, arts and humanities, and very little other. Um, so one of our students, the recent grads, Ariel, uh, from the co-op program says, coming from a kinesiology background, I had very limited experience and knowledge within business. I knew that the MBA program at DeGroote was the next step to help close my knowledge gap and provide me with the opportunity to gain real world experience through the co-op opportunities. So some of her co-ops were at Scotiabank and then another one at Mark, uh, Microsoft. So she kind of switched from uh, a little bit of finance into marketing, which you'll see people do um, as they start to explore and choose their electives in second year. That's really when you kind of get into what you're interested in, what you're good at. Um, so your ROI or return on investment post program, the reason to kind of take an MBA and specifically with us, um, we do have a 94% secure rate as far as employment within 10 months of graduation, which is great. It's very high. Um, and you can see our top industries here. Um, and this has a lot to do with our employer partners and the networks we've built through our career and professional development team. So finance tends to be the top industry, at least this these facts are based on 2023 grads, so, um, but I would say there's pretty consistent over the years that finance is number one. Then consulting, tech, and healthcare. Um, so those top four are usually what our students are interested in either post-grad or for their co-ops if you're doing the co-op program. You will see other industries on here. Um, so even in the bottom there, like telecommunication, transportation, government, um, NGOs, hospitality, energy, and wholesale distribution. So the average salary post-grad is just under 82000 which is great, especially if you're coming from co-op with little work experience before, um, with the highest salary of 2023 being 128,000, um, and then average signing bonus of about 10,000 as well. So here's just a sample list of employers. So these are employers who both hire our grads and also have hired our students for co-op. Um, there's a much longer list on our, our website to give you kind of a full scope, but uh, from 2023, these seem to be the highlight um, employers. So the MBA with co-op follows this um, calendar, basically. Um, there are some exceptions if students choose to do a co-op in a different way, but I would say for the majority of students, they begin with academic, then do a work term, followed by academic, work, and so on until they graduate after that last academic term. So that's how that year of work is split into three um, separate instances, and it gives you the opportunity to kind of learn five courses in the first academic term and apply what you've learned in that first term to your following work term and so on. And then you would again begin your specialization in academic term three of year two um, and academic term four. It is possible if you do well in your co-op to be asked and given a return offer. So some students will go back to the same company in a different position for the following co-ops. Um, and then ideally in your last co-op, um, if they have a position available, they would offer you a full-time position that you would then start after your final academic term. So you can always reach out to our student ambassadors and recent grads on our student profiles page on the website and kind of inquire with them because they put their email and LinkedIn uh, to say, you know, how did they get 
you know, did they get a return offer? What are the odds of that happening? But um, I've spoken to a few student ambassadors that that was their situation. So it's always great to hear those success stories. So over those 3 work terms, the average earnings, at least in 2023, were 47,000 and they tend to go up each year. Um, and again, so you'll have these career and professional development supports for up to six months after graduation. So I think that really speaks to our high employment secure rate. Um, so the degree advantage, just to give you a little bit more about the career services available to you. Um, we really want to help you as far as job search strategy, gaining experience, growing your network and building knowledge and skills. Um, so these are some employer connection examples, like ev events we do throughout the year um, and opportunities that will be available to you. Um, so connecting with alumni, uh, connecting with our career development team to work on interview prep, to work on resume building, and to give you industry insights. We'll have speakers come from co uh, different companies from the various industries, as well as recruiters who are, would be the people that would hire you. So it's great for them to kind of put a face to a name before you even submit your resume. And then the personalized career coaching done by our career and professional development team. Um, these are just some of the um, sessions that they do, um, you know, negotiation prep, recruitment, concerns and issues, self assessment, goal and action setting, a toolkit review. Um, they'll connect you with both online resources and in person resources, whether they're workshops um, or things that you can complete on your own and then kind of test your skills afterwards. Um, so there's a very large focus on this and, you know, our school, the entire population at one time would be less than 500 students. Um, and we have a very large academic support and career support team. Um, so kind of like opposed to the undergrad. So I would say it's very easy for you to get help. Students can meet as much as once a day if you'd wanted to. I don't many, know many that do, but you do have that opportunity um, and you're only required to meet with them once. So definitely taking advantage of these tools and resources available to you and our great staff, um, I think would give you the best benefit in the program. And this is just a little timeline overview. So this would be like your first term and then the following terms follow a similar timeline where you can work on your career launch um, essentials here at the beginning in August. Then you have onboarding core and core courses starting in September and, and these career kind of like things that are available to you are in each of the boxes. So they continue on throughout the year. And then October, you'll have core courses and we introduce something called grit week, where you take a week off of courses and work on a project with an outside entity, um, a business. Uh, this term, it was the nuclear power facilities on campus um, to help them to solve a problem and come up with a business idea. And then you present it at the end of the week to judges and um, you can win awards. Um, so it's a great opportunity for you to work with a group outside of your class group and also really work on the skills that you've learned um, just in the first month of classes. And then November, just continuing on, connecting with alumni, experiential activities, and then December is usually the exam period. Um, so beyond just the basic you know, core curriculum and the career services available to you. We have extracurriculars uh, for students to succeed um, and different initiatives for them as well. So one competition is the NBA games. Um, we have been champions of the NBA games uh, for the, the five times in the past 10 years, um, and that's across schools um, across Canada. And we do have international um, competitions as well. Women in Capital Markets, scholarships, international and local case competitions, as I was saying, and then we do have DISC, which is the DeGroote Innovative Solutions Competition. All of these, you can win money, as you can see, they have a big check there, um, and it's an opportunity for you to network with potential employers as well. Um, we have 11 student associations. Um, we've participated in something called pitching in for charity. Um, the DeGroot leaders and student ambassadors as well are, are ways for you to show your leadership and kind of add to your resume and contribute to um, our student body at the same time. Uh, the DeGroot Experience Fund is something you can apply to to help fund you to travel internationally to compete in competitions. And um, 
again, the student ambassador there, you can follow us on Instagram. Um, we have a peer preparation program and then a podcast as well. So, as far as admissions, um, we have a holistic approach when looking at all applications. Um, there's like a full system. We look at every piece of the application and kind of add up all of the scores for each component to give you this final um, thing for us to evaluate. Um, so there's application questions, um, which are included once you log into the portal, but you have um, more time to answer those. Um, and then once you submit the application, we'll have uh, you know, your final submission for those. And then we're looking for a B average in the final 2 years of your undergraduate degree. Uh, we're looking, we look at your resume. So we highly recommend you use the resume template we have. On our website, um, so this would be something that really exemplifies your volunteer and extracurricular on top of just your work experience in case you don't have much. Um, it, the template helps you to really focus on those other areas and, and show us um, your, your work ethic in other ways. Um, two references, academic or professional, you can have two academic if you're coming um, straight out of school, you can have one of each. Um, and then you would just need their emails and we send them a form directly to fill out. The Kira online interview is something that is separate from the application portal, but must be completed before you submit your application. And these will be four questions that you answer kind of on the spot. So as opposed to the application questions where I said you had more time to answer those and kind of create, um, you know, the best possible answer for you. Uh, the Kira will be something where the question pops up. You have a little bit of time to think about it and then you answer in two minutes um, and there'll be four of those and they're video responses that are recorded. The fifth question is a written response that's also timed. So the GMAT is requirements depending upon your GPA. So we do have a GMAT waiver. Um, you would complete a pre-assessment form and that's located on our get started page on the DeGroote website. Um, so once you complete the pre-assessment, you would upload your transcript and then we'll do a GPA calculation. And if you meet the GPA cutoff for the waiver, um, we will send you a PDF that says like GMAT waiver 2025. Um, and then you wouldn't have to write that test and you're at no disadvantage to have the GMAT waiver as far as when we're considering applicants. Um, a lot of our applicants end up having the waiver, so it's definitely not uh, like a disadvantage to you to do that. Um, it kind of just means that you can complete your application a little bit faster. You don't have to worry about um, studying for and taking that test, which is great. Uh, so the next deadline is next week, actually, it's November 27th. Um, this is the uh, link to apply. Um, then the following deadline is February 26th. So that's for international students. That would be their last deadline. Domestic students can also apply by February 26th, but they have a round four after that as well. So May 30th is the final deadline for domestic. February 26th is the final international deadline. And we give our admissions decision decision six to eight weeks after each deadline. So if you apply by next week, you'll most likely find out either by the end of December or the very beginning of January. So financial aid, we do offer scholarships to both domestic and international students. They range from two to 30,000. And again, are based on your application. So when we're viewing, we're reviewing candidates for admission. We'll also review them for entrance scholarships at the same time. There's no separate application for that. If you do apply by the 27th deadline, we have an additional scholarship competition called the DeGroote Scholarship Competition. And we can, um, we'll include anybody who's applied by round one or round two in that competition as well. And you can get up to an additional $15,000. Um, and then in course awards are awards that you can apply for starting in the September of your school year, you would be entering. So September, 2025, um, and then you would apply through what's called award spring, which is through our student portal. Um, and those awards can be applied to any following terms. Uh, and again, that's 1 application you would do and you can apply for multiple scholarships. So that's all I had uh, as far as the presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions at this point and kind of go through anything that I mentioned earlier. 
Um, so I have one question in the chat from Sheila. Can you talk a little bit more about the co-op bit? Do students have to look for the placement themselves? Is there a set number of hours one needs to complete? So we have an online resource. It's a job board. That's just for our degree MBA students and there'll be hundreds of listings. So you would essentially go through and you can. I would recommend using the assistance of one of our career and professional development team members um, to kind of find co-ops that might fit you best, that you might be best qualified for based on your background. Um, and then you would begin the application for those independently. However, definitely work with our career team with like creating the best possible resume and cover letter for that particular application. Um, they'll help you to prep for the interview as well. So since we have, um, they're called relationship managers as part of that career and professional development team who have come from backgrounds, from finance to health service management tech, they know what to expect as far as the interview, how many interviews you'll have, what kind of questions they'll ask, if you'll have to present anything. So they can help you to prepare for that particular interview um, for whatever industry that job is in. And then once you get the results of that, you know, we'll share that with you and kind of go over the next steps. So hopefully you would get that job. Um, but if not, you can apply for other co-ops. Our secure rate for the first work term for co-ops is 100% um, based on the previous years. Uh, so that you know shouldn't be an issue. It just kind of depends on what you want to apply to, how many you apply to. Um, but we really work with you to make sure that you're prepared the best of your ability. Um, so that you can have the best outcome for that. Um, and then as far as hours, it depends on the job you're applying for. Most of them are like 35 hour weeks, like a normal full time job. And so you would be doing that and again, not studying at all during that term. And there's no tuition cost that term either. You're just getting paid, <laughs> which is great. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll work with you as much as possible. Um, did anybody else have any questions? I can also share the links that I've been talking about here too in the chat. Um, so I'll pull that up for you. So I do have uh, the, uh, the admission requirements here. So I'll put that in the chat. And then the student profiles page as well. So that way you can connect with any of our current or recent grads. Um, again, through LinkedIn or um, just directly emailing them. And then if you want more information on the finance piece, the scholarships, I'll put that in as well. And then the co-op information, I also have a little bit more um, from our CPD team. So you can kind of see all the services they offer. Let's see. Yep, you're welcome, Sheila. Thank you for doing that, Simone. That's really helpful. Oh, yeah, you're very welcome. Not a problem. Let's see if there's anything else here. Oh, and then the get started uh, page. So if you want to complete a, a pre assessment and be reviewed for a GMAT waiver, um, that's a good one to have. And I think the last one I'll put in is meet us. So that way, if you want to come to any future events, um, they'll all be listed here. So I think the next ones will be in December and then we'll have an open house in January on campus. So you can see our building and everything and kind of meet um, the other interested students, which would be fun. Um, but yeah, not sure if anyone has any more questions. I can just show you our um, emails here that we can contact me after. Perfect. I'm, I'm not seeing any other questions come through. So I'll just for the moment, take this opportunity to remind students that if you have any um, questions or further, you need further support. Um, you can always get in touch with us in the academic pathways office here at Seneca um, and Simone has posted all of those contact links um, also in the chat and also on screen. So don't hesitate to connect there as well. Um, Let's just see. Yeah, I'm not seeing any more questions. So we'll probably thank you. We'll probably end the the session there. Um, 
And yeah, don't hesitate to reach out if uh, you need anything else or any more support. And uh, I hope everyone has a great day. Thank you so much, Simone, for joining us today and taking the time um, to share this helpful information with us and our students. Thank you for having me. It's been great. Thanks so much. You're welcome. <laughs> Have a great day, everybody. Bye.